We are like children who repeat by rote the sentences of grandams and tutors, and, as they grow older, of the men of talents and character they chance to see, painfully recollecting the exact words they spoke. Afterwards, when they come into the point of view which those who had uttered these sayings, they understand them and are willing to let the words go, for at that time they can use words as good when occasion comes. If we live truly, we shall see truly. It is as easy for the strong man to be strong as it is for the weak to be weak. When we have new perceptions, we shall gladly disburden the memory of its hoarded treasures as old rubbish. When a man lives with God, his voice shall be as sweet as the murmur of the brook and the rustle of the corn. And now at last the highest truth on this subject remains unsaid, probably cannot be said, for all we say is the far off remembering of intuition. That thought by which I can now nearest approach to say it is this. When good is near you, when you have life in yourself, it is not by any known or accustomed way you shall not discern the footprints of any other. You shall not see the face of man, you shall not hear any name. The way, the thought, the good shall be wholly strange and new. It shall exclude example and experience. You take the way from man, not to man. All persons that ever existed are its forgotten ministers. Fear and hope are alike beneath it. There is somewhat low even in hope. In the hour of vision, there is nothing that can be called gratitude, nor properly joy. The soul raised over passion beholds identity and eternal causation, perceives the self-existence of truth and right, and calms itself with knowing that all things go well. Vast spaces of nature, the Atlantic Ocean, the South Sea, long intervals of time, years, centuries, are of no account. This which I think and feel underlay every former state of life and circumstances, as it does underlie my present, and what is called life, what is called death. Life only avails, not the having lived. Power ceases in the instant of repose. It resides in the moment of transition from past to a new state, in the shooting of the gulf and the darting to an aim. It's one fact the world hates that the soul becomes, for that ever degrades the past, turns the riches to poverty, all reputation to shame, confounds the saint with the rogue, shoves Jesus and Judas equally aside. Why then do we prat of self-reliance? Inasmuch as the soul is present, there will be power, not confident, but agent. To talk of reliance is a poor, external way of speaking. Speak rather of that which relies, because it works and is. Who has more obedience than I masters me, though he should not raise his finger? Round him I must revolve by the gravitation of spirits. We fancy it rhetoric when we speak of eminent virtue. We do not yet see that virtue is height, and that a man or company of men, plastic and permeable to principles, by the law of nature, must overpower and ride all cities, nations, kings, rich men, poets, who are not.